Welcome in to another episode of Your Drone Questions Answered, brought to you by Drone Launch Academy. I'm your host, Chris Breedlove. So for today's episode, we're kind of going to do a callback to last week's episode, episode 96, where I sat down with Ravi Samaja from McKim and Creed to discuss the ASPRS Edition 2 Positional Action Standards. What I want to do in this episode, which will be a little bit shorter than most, maybe just a quick solo episode, and I'll share my screen, obviously, as we're doing now kind of walk through just one little real world example, just kind of help illustrate and crystallize the accuracy standards. We're going to look at just one example here, which will be vertical positional accuracy. To kind of break this down, it's simply, and these are all kind of structured the same, at least horizontal, vertical, and 3D positional accuracy. But we're taking the square root of the RMSC of product fit to checkpoints, so on that in a second, as well as the control network or, or checkpoints. So we square both of those, take the square root. So again, that first component is product fit to checkpoints. And you can do all the actual math, but I'm going to use software as I think most people would for this first component. And as a reminder to say that you've actually tested to meet these standards, one of the components of this revision from 2024 was a minimum of 30 checkpoints, no matter how small the site. Uh, if you don't have 30 checkpoints of some fewer number, you can say it was produced to meet that standard. You can still report the values that you did calculate, but you would say produced to meet, not tested to meet because you did not meet that 30 checkpoint minimum. So we'll kind of walk through this with a real quick example, but product fit and then combine that with the positional error of the survey control slash checkpoint squared and add it together. Square root of that equals what we'll get to in this table in the end. So for our example here, let's first start. I've got this nice L2 point cloud here in DJI Terra. Nice little community college campus in this example. Not about Terra or any software that we're going to talk about. But I'll just zoom in real quick to say, for example, here's one of my check shots. You can kind of see the Chevron here in the intensity view as well as the RGB view. So that's one of my shots. I've got a number of these out here. Um, pushing 40, 46. Some are actually tape chevrons, some are stake targets, some are just corner stop bar, whatever, right? Some are just middle of the asphalt. I have all those check shots. I punch my initial L2 point cloud through in DJF Terra, get to that quality report. And so again, for that first component of calculating our vertical positional accuracy, I get kind of an initial reading on that here. So again, not about Terra per se. I've got 46 checkpoints considered here. What I'm really looking at on a per point basis is this altitude difference. A lot of other softwares might call this Delta Z values, but regardless, the difference, of course, from the checkpoint altitude to the reconstruction altitude, as Terra calls it, AKA the laser altitude or the altitude at that X and Y location. Point cloud, almost a tenth of a foot, almost 800s. 10th over 10th, almost 500, so on and so forth. But looking at this in a holistic picture, we see some averages, absolute value, whatever, but really it's this RMSE value here I want to kind of start with. So uh, 700 and change in centimeters, just because that's how the standards are kind of written for easier math. So that's basically 2.25 centimeters RMSE. But again, this is initial. We've not even classified ground yet or anything else to this point cloud. So to kind of jump into the next phase of this. So again, not about a particular software endorsement. I love TerraScan, sell TerraScan in my day job. But it's not about that. This is about just an example to illustrate what you can do, right? So uh, as Ravi pointed out, Ravi Sinead, our guest last week again in episode 96, TerraScan is one of the tools that he particularly enjoys. He does a good job of this. So all I did once I brought in that, that raw LAS out of DJI Terra, uh, ran some classification, some cleanups, some different things on here. I went to my tools, output control report, and got what we see over here on the screen. And if we zoom in some of those same shots um, from the other view in DJI Terra, so there's all my points. I also point out, I actually turned off my actual control points down here, removed them from this calculation. So I'm truly looking at this 500 series of points was my numbering convention uh, for my checks. You actually notice this one outlier here at this point, 528, which we can see where that is on the screen. Um, any number of reasons it could be that's not all that unusual with 30 or more check shots to have kind of an outlier. Could be, yeah, just something funky. The satellite can fit. Could be a lot of different reasons. 
Um, but that's not unusual if you're newer to GNSS and these sorts of things, but uh, that's why it's always good to also have more than 30, right? If I only had exactly 30, if I had a bust here at this one point, am I having to go out and recollect it? Uh, am I not having to maybe say I only produced to meet versus tested meet because I don't have 30 valid check shots? So just something to keep in mind from a redundancy perspective. But in any event, similar to what we saw in the DJ Terra quality report, have this Delta Z column here, again, largely very good values. Or worst is that almost quarter of a foot lower than, um, or I'm sorry, the point cloud, you guys got to look directionality. The point cloud is about quarter of a foot lower than the RTK shot that I provided. And then the maximum positive difference is about 1500s. But again, pretty representative spectrum here. But again, looking at the RMSC, 0 0.0766, so almost 800s of a foot, that's 2.33. Uh, centimeters. So anyway, but back to the standard here, that's just the first component again, right? So we've got our first component of error, product fit to checkpoints. We're looking at, let's round it to two, three, or two, even 2.5 centimeters, just for easy math. That's just one component. We have to always also look at that. And this is part of the uh, addition to from 2024 change. What about the error in our checkpoints? So it's also an RMSE expression. I'm not a surveyor, I should point that out and be really clear. So I'm not even going to make claims about my data. I could, but if you're not a surveyor either, and you're working with, as you pretty much should be, whoever you subcontracted with or whoever, or whatever, they can report on their data to give you that second component of error. And again, bringing all that together, we take the square root of, in my case, 2.5 centimeters, let's say squared plus, and we'll go with the table here in a moment. It's called two centimeters squared, take the square root. And below here in the standard, we have just an example of that. So I would come down here and say, okay, 2.5 centimeters, my first component of error fit the checkpoints. We'll just assume two centimeters is my survey checkpoint accuracy, which gives us a total um, vertical positional accuracy that we could state about this point cloud, 3.2 centimeters. So what we could do, since we actually have in this case, 30 or more, actually well over 30 checkpoints, we could write a statement about vertical accuracy. Uh, and I'm really, these are all mostly hard surface. I'd say non-vegetated vertical accuracy. I could use this statement here and say it was tested to meet a 3.2 centimeter RMSE for the vertical accuracy. So again, just want to give this really quick kind of real world example, like we talked about last week with Robbie Epson A6, do read the standards, do get familiar with them. Even if you're not a surveyor, it's going to understand the concepts that you partner with surveyors in your aerial mapping work. But again, just a quick example, this is not about the L2 or DJI Terra or TerraScan software, love all of those products, both hardware and software, but just to kind of give folks again, just kind of a quick illustration of how you go about calculating that leveraging the tools that you have, leveraging your software, obviously leveraging the technology in the field or whoever did take those shots. So hope that's helpful to kind of further crystallize what we talked about all in theory, of course, last week, episode 96, and we'll kind of wrap this short, sweet episode there. As always, if you have a question, like us to tackle on the show, please drop in the drone launch connect community, visit ydqa.io or drop me an email at chris at drone launch Until next time, have a great week.